I think it was important to bring together our port members, uh, harbour masters from right around the country, bring together with them first responders and government agencies are, that are responsible for how would we as a nation respond to a EV fire on board a vessel. There's a lot of take up with the community and people are loving the scooters, they're loving the cars and, and, and the technology is very exciting. It's friendly for the environment but there are some huge risks and we need to know what they are. I've been asked to share information that we've learnt from things we've done as our fire service, but it's also very valuable for us as a fire service to learn what actually happens and is regulated in the ports and where we might be called to deal with an incident. I think that the, the biggest challenge is we don't actually know all the consequences, we're still learning curve and I think uh, the, the fire chief that spoke earlier had a very good point, we're, we're building the plane as we're flying it, I think is one of the best acronyms going. Every day there's a new battery type being developed, every vehicle is different, so it's not necessarily the, the latest additions that we're going to see major problems with straight away, it's all the products that have been generated previously and are already on the market or coming in second hand. And when it's on ships, if you don't tell the crews what the problem is, they can't respond. Really good initiative from Ports of Australia to be proactive and, and try and um, uh, get ahead, I suppose, of, of what they're looking at and, and some ideas of how they can mitigate the risk, um, make things safer for not only the, the cargo ships, but their workers in the ports. We haven't actually, as a nation and indeed as a global economy, worked out how to deal with a catastrophic event involving this technology, these lithium ion batteries. When they do uh, fail, they fail both in terms of toxic uh, gas, but then also the fires, you can't put them out. So you can imagine it on the street if you can't put them out, imagine them on a vessel out at sea or in a port if you can't put them out and they set fire to other vehicles or scooters right next to them. Where you have a vapour cloud explosion, so where the batteries can generate an awful lot of gases in a very, very short period of time. If there's no flame, then those gases don't burn off. And if they're able to collect in a headspace or into a, in, in a confined space, the trigger point can be anything, static charge or whatever, that can ignite the hydrogen gas, which is part of that. And the last ship I attended, which was the Fremantle Highway, we had what was a vapour cloud explosion in the headspace of that, that caused the rupture of the fire main for the ship, so the ship's crew couldn't actually fight fires from thereafter, um, and actually prevent them getting back to the lifeboats. So there was a lot of uh, challenges involved. Well, we need to have a good discussion uh, about how we respond initially, even if the end result is that we take a ship somewhere and let it burn to the waterline, that's realistically probably what the answer to the problem is. But there's different um, challenges in that space between is it in a port, is it in Commonwealth waters, how far out to sea is it? The problem's real, it's here now. It could happen in a port today. Uh, it's only luck that it hasn't happened so far. Trying to keep up with the pace of technology is, is being difficult, but, um, but what we know now from even just 12 months ago is significant. So the networking that goes on in, for, in things like this is, is invaluable. When it comes to ships, the biggest challenge is containment. How does it, and understanding your ship, understanding your space, ports and, and terminals, is understanding if you do have a battery fire or you do have a lithium ion release of oxygen or release of toxic gas, what are the consequences in that space? Are your crews, are your members of public that could be in there aware of what could be happening and, and respond accordingly? But we're a maritime nation. There's no other way of getting these vehicles here. You can't drive them, you can't put them on a train or a truck. So we are very heavily reliant on maritime vessels bringing goods to and from the country.